Hi, all. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, week two's assignments and the subjects for this for this week. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is I ask a lot, whether it's in my design class, sculpture, art appreciation, what is the value of art? And I like this question because there is not one answer. There's not, uh, on some levels, it becomes opinion. Uh, but in my class, I work very hard to try to find the facts that prove one way or the other. And I value your opinion, uh, what your thoughts are, but that doesn't mean I won't spend the whole semester trying to change uh, your opinion and ideas around this. So if you ask me what is the value of art to society, I would say a couple things. And this is simply when you uh, answer the question yourself, you can consider my opinion, uh, but I'm more interested in you guys pushing forward your own opinions and uh, having a robust discussion around that as opposed to just reflecting uh, what, um, what my thoughts are. So art does a couple things. It uh, reflects back to us uh, who we are. And in that reflection, it, um, it, it sometimes it exposes things that are too difficult to see or to discuss um, or to even think about. And that's where it requires the artist to be courageous uh, at times to surface ideas and issues uh, about us, about society, about who we are as people. And uh, so that's one level of art. There's art that entertains us. There's art that um, makes us think. There's art that simply makes us feel a certain way. There's a design sensibility, whether people uh, know it or not, that impacts and influences the way they see the world and live in the world. And uh, the reason that art appreciation is so important is because we want to at least let you um, understand this idea. Now, whether you're going to stop and uh, uh, appreciate, sorry, I'm trying to find the dot that's not most distracting coming through those trees. Um, whether you're going to stop and have a full appreciation for art, that's, that's not our goal. We just want to let you know that this is what's here and what's available to you. So whether you um, are trying to convey a message, represent real life, uh, impact uh, the way someone thinks or feels, or simply fill a space with something that is uh, your preference, this is all what art does. So does art help you pay the bills? No, they always talk about the starving artist and not be able to make money, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But does art impact who you are? Uh, absolutely. It defines us. It shapes us. And with we couldn't survive without it. Uh, unfortunately for the humanities, is it's a lot of its abstractions, just like philosophy uh, or literature, poetry, um, you know, painting, sculpture. But uh, art uh, is it. it we would not be who we are without art. So is that a value to society? I would say yes. Uh, next thing that I want to do is, uh, let me just quickly talk about critique. I posted in the announcement a link. There's a workbook that uh, goes with this course uh, that has a lot of supplemental uh, uh, material in it. And, um, and so I, I will link to that often. You can go there. It's just a PDF. Uh, you can reference it or you can download it, uh, whatever you want to do. It's free. It, it's, but it's something that I've created over the years that uh, supplement all my courses. So critique is something where I'm going to ask you a couple times, and I'll mention this again, but uh, there's ru actually rules to critique. And I placed them in the announcements, and you can go to that page. And so what be before you come to any of our class meetings where I'm going to ask you to interact with each other and even uh, with um, when you're doing the class discussions, the, uh, the discussion boards, uh, keep critique in mind. And there's, there's two uh, really most important points with critique and that is one, 
whenever you comment on art, you have to understand the artist's intention because that tells you what to comment on. A lot of times someone will be uh, commenting on whether they like it or not, and that has nothing to do with critique. There's no value in that. Uh, if it's your buddy and you want to talk to him about, well, do you like it? you want to buy it? You, would you put it on your wall? That's one conversation. But to critique it uh, uh, where there's any value to your comments, and especially to the artist, uh, you have to first understand what their intentions are. So then you can say, okay, you achieved it, or you didn't. Sometimes the artist might be um, creating work where they're trying to in, uh, enrage a person or entice them to do something or to think something or to prod them or you know and so it's not going to be a like thing it's you're not going to like it because you're being uh, pushed and pulled and tugged and uh, provoked and and so the intention of the artist wasn't for you to like it it was for you to have a reaction to it so understanding the intention that's the first thing the second thing is always have humility in your critique understand that really your opinion doesn't matter it's not right so many times we talk and critique like we know what's best or we know what we're seeing and we know what the artist needs to know or should do and this would make it better and okay that's great yes that's one now let's hear from the other 25 and there's going to be 25 different ideas now maybe you all come to the same conclusion still it doesn't matter because that might not be the artist's intention. So at least talk from a place of understanding your place in the dialogue, in the conversation, and that it's simply your opinion. And offer it as that, and not as that you're offering something that the artist should know or that you know something they don't. So that's very important. So that's critique. Um, this week is your first uh, big sculpture. We did the self-portrait sculpture last week. And so this week is what you're going to be doing is you're going to be imagining a public work of art. Now, it's what this means is, first of all, it's large scale. I might also use the word monumental, which means it's big. When I say large scale, six feet and bigger. Uh, and, and, that mean, and part of the reason that it needs to be large is because it's going to be outdoors. So it's it's got to be monumental, large scale. It's going to be placed outdoor. And is what you do is you go and find a site where you would place it. This is all done. This is all in your imagination. This is all proposed. It's not actually. You're not really building a sculpture. Uh, but you're imagining if you did build it and what it would look like and all the different factors involved with that, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, so go and find a site where you would like to build a large-scale sculpture take a picture of that site if you want to if you're good after you build a maquette and you want to photoshop it in that site great you don't have to that's uh, not required uh, but you could actually even draw it in there um, there is an architect i mention often his name is frank gary and it's what he'll do is he'll find a space where he wants to put a building and his first drawing will literally just be scribbles he'll just scribble some lines because he wants to get an idea of the dimension and how it fills in the space and what would go there ideally before he even thinks about a door or a window or or one of the lines of the wall he just puts something there to fill it to kind of understand how that building is going to fit within that environment so you can do a scribble to show me how you how tall it is. If there's a tree close by, well, how close would it be to the tree? Will it be up to the tree line? Will it be above the tree? Will it tower? Will it make the tree subordinate? Where will it be placed in proportion to other um, area, other items in that space? Are there bushes? What color is the grass? Is there a sidewalk? Are there homes? Where do people view it from? Is there a road? I uh, once did an outdoor uh, piece where it was along a road. It was about 40 feet off the road. People that drove down the road drove 30, between 30 and 50 miles an hour. It was a, a four lane, maybe eight lane uh, uh, thoroughfare. And so I knew that details weren't going to be important in this work of art because nobody was going to stop and look at it. They were going to see it as they were driving by in their car. And so you consider that, the colors to use, how big are the elements within the design, how much detail do you need? Because like I said, small details are going to get lost if your purpose is that the viewer is going to be the people in the car. 
Uh, see, the dog has a strong opinion about this too. So, um, so you take a picture, identify where you want to put it. The next thing you do is you do a sketch of what the work would look like and imagine uh, the materials, how you would put it together. Uh, once again, the color, the size, you imagine all these things. And, um, and then you create a maquette. And the maquette is a small model of the larger scale work of art. It, and it can be out of anything. It can be out of cardboard or paper or construction paper or popsicle sticks or twigs. It doesn't matter. Um, ideally, you would make it where it, you get the feeling of the work that you're going to create. So, for instance, I wouldn't use tree limbs to, to do a, a, a maquette of something that I intended to be glass or metal. I might use paper in that case or... Uh, construction paper if the metal was going to be colored so you want to semi you want to represent the work uh, but it doesn't have to be exactly what the work will be like you're working out details you're working out proportions you're working out uh, where you're going to put some tension in the work uh, you're thinking it through and you're imagining scale so for instance uh, you might make one inch equal a foot so that when you're looking at the maquette, you can say, okay, if we make this 12 times this size, it'll be 12 feet tall, but it's only 12 inches right now. So it's manageable and you can make it at your kitchen table with whatever materials you have. Uh, within the workbook, I have, uh, and I have it listed, but I, I think it's on, uh, yeah, page 77. Uh, there's a sample maquette and some, uh, it's from an exercise, which you're not doing necessarily, but um, it gives you some details and shows you w what a maquette would look like and what a professional art artist has done uh, with their maquette. So, um, so that's going to be your first sculpture. And you actually, it is, uh, you are going to present your maquette on Thursday, June 11th in our second class meeting. We only have Right now, I only have two uh, class meetings scheduled. This is the second one. And so you will, each student will show their uh, maquette, describe the art that they're imagining, uh, describe the um, placement where it would be, maybe even show us a picture. Nothing high tech, just kind of create it and then do a little presentation. And here are the considerations. And I have them in the assignment. Uh, under the lesson so you can see this but I'll just tell you the things that you're going to consider size placement the finish uh, is it colored are you gonna let it rust is it wood whatever it is it doesn't matter durability so let's say you want to create an outdoor 12 foot tall uh, sculpture and you want it to be an origami figure so at first you're like well I'm just gonna make it out of paper well, that would be easy to do. It'd be effective. It would look nice for a day, right? So then you're like, okay, well, I'm going to put a coating on the paper. Okay, maybe you just extended it out to 45 days. Uh, there's uh, artists that I've seen have done it, and it's really a nice effect, but they use metal, and they painted it white. So you might want to use metal because then now it's going to last years. So uh, the material and the durability is very important. Something that I talk a lot about that most people that come to my class haven't considered is the, the base and the structure. So if you're creating something outside, it has to be safe. It can't fall over and kill someone. Matter of fact, you're even responsible for it. I once placed a piece out on a, a public street and it was tumbling I-beams and it was very solid and you could climb up it. And it was on the street where there was a lot of bars. And I knew, one, I knew before the week was done, there would be footprints on the top, people standing on top of it and taking pictures. It was about seven feet tall, seven, eight feet tall. And then I also thought, well, they're going to fall off and kill themselves. So the first thing I had to do is make sure it was sturdy because I knew people were going to climb on it. That was my responsibility. And then whether someone was drunk and climbed on top of it, I got to think about it like, okay, let's not put anything down here that they're going to fall on and impale themselves or hurt themselves. But after that, I, short of insurance, can't be responsible for that, but I need to at least consider it. So, and one last thing I'll say is the base is part of the art. This is very important. People often create their art and they don't think about how it's going to stand or where they're going to place it. Even an artist that puts paintings on the wall, how's it going to be hung? Is there a frame? Is there not a frame? 
you know these are parts of it that are part of the art if I hung a painting on the wall and it hung crooked if that was my intention that's great but if it's not and that took away from the presentation of it then maybe I need to do a hook where it's easier to hang it and it's going to hang straight uh, with sculpture you've got to have a base because it's going to be freestanding but the base is part of the art it is the art and so don't think of it as something separate when you design something imagine that it is the art and it's part of it and you have to consider that the audience uh, is very important uh, you know who is the audience like I said with that sculpture that I put on the side of the road the audience were people driving by in the car and in this case it was Frisco so the city of Frisco and with that you imagine who the stakeholders are so the fact that it was residents living in Frisco now I have an idea who's going to be viewing this and how they will interact with it and what they'll think about it and what I can provide that will engage them at the level that they are. Stakeholders takes that a step further and I imagine, okay, who is this art? Who's going to, who does this art impact? Who has an investment in this art? And even the people driving by have an investment. Like now it's in their uh, line of sight. They have to see this every day going back and forth. So now they just became stakeholders, but they're also the audience. Stakeholders, it's important to consider them and, and satisfy them. The audience, then it gives you, it uh, gives you direction in your intention. Uh, stakeholders could be the people that, uh, commissioned the work, the land that the art is on, the city that is worried about safety and how the art impacts the community, uh, people that walk by, uh, the, um, maybe you engage other uh, artists in it uh, and you engage the school system so they all can become stakeholders and uh, impact the way that you build, construct, and promote the art, uh, the way it lives in that community from that point going forward. Uh, along with the audience you think about um, where's the art viewed from this is very important so as you select your site and you decide that you're gonna put an art piece of art in there think about where it's gonna be viewed from uh, on we've placed a couple pieces on South Campus and um, so you place it in this open area but there's trees around so if you're walking up this way and there's there's going to be a tree between you and the art, is that okay? Set up a or sustaining membership. Do you want, the amount that works for uh, your budget. You're making a big difference when you give a small amount every month.